women's semi-finals day in Paris were under sunny skies. The players have been battling it out for the ultimate prize, a place in the Roland Garros final. Welcome to live at Roland Garros, where the 2021 Roland Garros finals are one player away from being set. So with that in mind, here for you is what we have for you on tonight's show. Stefanos Tsitsipas comes through five-set thriller for first Grand Slam final. Rafa Nadal and Novak Djokovic to do battle for a 58th time for a place in the final. And we build up to Saturday's showpiece events. Hello and welcome to the show nightly with you from seven o'clock right through until this point. And you can find us on the official Roland Garros social media channels and keep getting in touch with us because it's lovely to hear from you. And I'm very happy to say that alongside me once more is Daniela Hansakova. Danny, the weather, the tennis, and we're actually only halfway through the tennis day. And the timing couldn't be any better. I mean, we just heard Rafael Novak uh, coming to the court and what a match that is going to be, but what a match we've already witnessed today. I mean. I I just feel like um, tennis has never been better. The weather has never been better. I think the conditions, it's something that we saw with Tsipas uh, and uh, Zverev that it's going to be brutal for these two as well, um, you know, just from the physical point of view, because it's still so hot. But, um, you know, the adrenaline, the excitement of this match, I mean, this is what we've been waiting for the entire tournament. Nadal is delighted that it's still so warm, this 58th meeting between the two. It is a ninth meeting at Roland Garros. It's 7-1 in the favor of Nadal. It's 19-7 in favor of Nadal on the clay. And it's 10-6 in favor of Nadal at Grand Slams. But Novak Djokovic wants to change that. This happened two minutes ago that these titans of the game were welcomed out onto Philippe Chatrier. Yeah, I mean, what a special moment and have the fans witnessing it. Uh, like I said, that tennis doesn't get any better. And yeah, I don't know about you, Gigi, but since this morning, I was like, I just can't wait. And I was counting every single minute until this point of the day. Well, I know where we'll be headed at the end of the show. We're going across there and we're going to watch a little bit of this match. But for now, with the best seat in the house, good evening, Eli. Good evening, good evening. Absolutely best seat in the house. Everybody is on their feet. There was a standing ovation for both players who walked out on court. There is electricity in the air. You can feel it. This is what they've been waiting for, in the words of Jimmy Connors. This is what they wanted. This is what they're going to get. Uh, these two guys, I mean, what to say, aside from the fact that these are two of the three giants of our sport. Um, conditions, yes, hot, however court is almost entirely in the shade so that'll make a difference uh, it's not going to be as hot on court we're standing in the sun right here but the shade literally starts right behind us uh, both players are at warm-up listen this place there is something in the air that's different and you know it has to be when Novak Djokovic Rafael Nadal are sharing a tennis court Eli thank you I mean how many more times are we going to get to see this spectacle these guys facing off against each other on one of the biggest stages in tennis. I mean, this is where we gotta be so grateful that we have still that opportunity and, uh, you know, appreciate everything they've done for for the tennis game. And you could just see when they went to start warming up, there were small smileys on both faces because I think even them, they were overwhelmed by that welcome. I mean, to have a standing ovations before they even start the match, that's just so cool from the crowd to, to show how much appreciation everyone has for, for both guys, what they've done for our game. Yeah, there's an awful lot at stake. Novak Djokovic has said, look, for me, it's all about the Grand Slams now. For, for Nadal, who's on 20, a couple more than Djokovic, he's going for number 14 here. Now, the reason they're only just coming out onto court is because the first semi-final took three hours and 37 minutes between Stefanos Tsitsipas and Sasha Zverev. Now we're waiting for a 58th meeting between these two. This was an eighth meeting between Tsitsipas and Zverev. 5-2 in favour of Tsitsipas. But interestingly, the first time they'd met on the Grand Slam stage. Well, if things are going in the... <laughs> Sorry about Bless that. you. Thank uh, you, Gigi. <laughs> um, it's the allergy. Uh, so if the things are going the way, uh, you know, the next generation is heading to, I wouldn't be surprised if um, these two will face, not maybe for 58 times, but, you know, it's a rivalry in making. And, uh, you know, like I said, today's schedule, it's the best okay. example of the next gen and still um, Rafa and Novak playing their best tennis. And... Uh, 
to me, you know, th three hours, 37 minutes, but it seemed longer than that, just because how hot it was, how physically it was out there. And first two sets, I felt like Sasha just got off a little bit of a slow start and Stefanos just took advantage of it. But to his credit, just like in the first round match, Sasha was able to step it up, start to be much more aggressive because I feel like the first two sets, uh, Stefanos was in control of everything and uh, Sasha was just a little bit too passive. Yeah, he seemed almost detached at times. I know he has a way of kind of looking around and sort of staring at nothing or everything, but Sitspas only had to play to a good level. He didn't have to be exceptional to get those All first two sets. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, you're so right, Gigi. It felt like mentally sometimes he was not on the court, but to his credit, somehow he managed to turn it around. But yes, I agree with you that Stefanos had to be good. Had, it didn't have to be unbelievable in the first two sets. But he came out firing Sitspas. We know for him, he's been building these blocks. He was 0-3 in Grand Slam semi-finals coming into this match. He's made a point of saying that he was going to build his game on the clay. He's going to work on the physical side of things. And that's what you saw from the off. And that's what we've seen throughout the whole course of 2021. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what was uh, impressive for Stefanos is that um, Sasha already has managed to get to the finals of a slam. And it's uh, such a new territory for Stefanos when he's never done it before. So that's why actually before the match, I was leaning a little bit towards more uh, Sasha as the favorite to get through. And after the fourth set, it looked like he was going to keep that momentum. But uh, to credit of Stefanos, um, you know, he managed to find a way at the end. But um, the, the third and fourth set, I felt like physically, Stefanos was the one struggling a little bit uh, out there. He lost ah, the intensity, again. and that's where Sasha was able to start to be much more aggressive. Yeah, it was very hard at the start of this third set to think that we were going to go any further than the three sets. And one thing that was notable was for Zverev, he wasn't saying anything. He wasn't getting angry. He was very, very calm, but not necessarily in a good way. Sitsipas kept talking to himself. He kept being very positive, whatever was happening. Yeah, he needed to be, because like I said, he's never um, was able to break that semi-final hurdle. So he needed to, uh, he needed any uh, extra positive energy he had out there to be able to get through this match today, because emotionally it's just uh, so difficult. But um, Sasha did what he did so well at the US Open. You know, he, he kept being aggressive. He came to the net much more. Uh, that was the key that I was missing in the first two sets, that he was too passive. But then um, he's done that so, so well in the tournament, being able to turn things around when they were not going his way. And to highlight how tough it is, especially on this surface over five sets, there's only been one person since 2009 that's dropped the first set and has gone through to win a Roland Garros semi-final. That was Stan Wawrinka against Andy Murray because this is a brutal and punishing surface, especially if you're down as Zverev was. And especially in the hot uh, weather, like I don't think we've ever experienced. So I think even for the guys, it's a new territory that suddenly you have to play best of five on clay, most physical tournament we ha we have. And with the All conditions again. that we've never witnessed, uh, you know, having back to back such a hot and wonderful days. So uh, physically, it was a huge effort from both guys out there. A big difference for Zverev when he started to turn it round was the serve. He started slowly on the serve. The first serve percentage was low. That dramatically increased in the third serve. Yeah, not only that in the third set, but he was also much more aggressive with his first shot. Uh, I was missing that in the first two sets, and uh, that's why he was able to dictate many more rallies and also coming in much more. Um, that, that, I said, was the key before the match, and in the third and fourth, he was able to dictate much, much more. And he's such a dangerous player wherever when he's playing his A game. He's got that wingspan, he's got the height, and he's got the serve with the follow-up on the forehand, and we know the damage the backhand can do. Oh, I mean, to me, that double hand, especially the one up the line, it's one of the best I've ever seen. Um, in the history of our game. And what is impressive for such a tall guy, how he's able to get down, uh, really use his legs well. I've said it many times. To me, one of the things that impresses me the most about Sasha's game is his movement. I mean, for being so, so tall and so lean, uh, he moves incredibly well. So, uh, And like I said, that double-hander, if someone wants to learn how to hit it the proper way, I would put it right there with no Novak's one. I mean, those are the two best double-handers. Daniel has a different technique. Um, I, I would pick Sasha's one uh, over over the other two guys, actually. And importantly for Zverev, he was able to continue the momentum from winning the third set by breaking early in the fourth and then holding on to that advantage. Yeah, and also was the variety, th throwing in a couple of drop shots. Uh, I still feel like uh, slice back and it's something he could 
add much more to his game and maybe you know for next year he might think about it because it's something for example Matteo Berrettini has improved big time and on clay it is always going to just help your game um, and that's a shot that Stefanos has uh, Sasha doesn't he doesn't really need to because of that incredible double hander but still I feel like if he looks at back at this match maybe a couple of times he could have used it much more also coming forward more Zverev remember in the early stages that was the weakness in the Zverev game coming forward he's much more confident when he comes forward now yeah he is I mean he's still I feel like he can still improve that but at least um, in the third and fourth set he was uh, coming to the net much much more and into the fifth set it was I feel it was very difficult to choose because Zverev had the momentum from coming from two sets to love down. How would Tsitsipas react? But he stayed cool as he had done through the match. No, it was incredible. Um, mentally, after being two sets to love up and then, uh, you know, forget those uh, that third and fourth set. And it, I mean, just the emotions afterwards and also the respect they have for each other. It was just beautiful scenes and uh, what a semi-final. Exactly what we expected and exactly what we got. He's the youngest man to reach a Grand Slam final since Andy Murray, Australia, 2010. He's got 39 wins for the season. He's got 22 of them on the clay. And as Danny touched on post-match, when in conversation with Marion Bartley, Stefano Tsitsipas was overcome with the emotion of the event and reaching his first Grand Slam final. You know, all I can think of is my roots, where I came from. I came from a really small place outside Athens. My dream was to play here. My dream was to play in the big stage of the French Open one day. I, I would have never thought that I would. I can understand the emotion from Tsitsipas. I mean, this is what tennis is about. This is what we've all been waiting for, um, you know, to this stage of the tournament to be. And uh, that's where the emotions really can overwhelm everyone. And uh, it was so cool to see Stefanos like that. And yeah, you're, during those moments when you big, win big matches, it's you, you go back where you come from, definitely. So it was nice that he actually has put it out there. Now we're going to be back on Philippe Chatrier shortly, but it wasn't the only semi-final that was taking place today. On court Simone Mathieu, we had the semi-finals of the women's double and for Barbora Kretikova, she has got a busy weekend coming up. <laughs> it just feels like she's never left the court since <laughs> last night. Um, probably she must have slept here as well and just went straight. But good news for her that uh, that match was quick. Didn't to take hopefully too much energy out of her, even though it was hot. But, um, you know, by now, hopefully she's back, <laughs> not on site anymore, and that she's resting and getting ready for a big day tomorrow. She'll go back to number one in doubles if they reclaim their title. It'll be their second one here because they won it in 2018. What a pairing those two are, Sinyakova and Krejcikova. So congratulations for them back into the final. And they will be facing Bethany Maddox-Sands, last year's champion in the singles, Iga Svante. Yeah, I mean, what a final this is going to be. And it's so cool to see Sviantek and Bethany doing so well. They've got so much energy, definitely the fan favorite and uh, great combination because you've got the, uh, you know, the, the youthfulness on one hand and the experience yeah, of uh, Bethany, Bethany on the other hand. Yeah. And I think for Sviantek, it's so good because uh, she's going to learn so much from Bethany. Look at that smile on Bethany Matic sands face. I think that's going to be a really exciting final when they line up for the women's doubles. Now, other semi-finals as we move around the ground. These were the first matches on court. The junior semi-finals and something extraordinary in the boys' singles competition hasn't happened anywhere since 2000. It's never happened at Roland Garros since the FFT began keeping junior records in 1951. All French semi-finalists. Oh, it's incredible. And it just shows what a great job a French Federation is doing with the junior system and uh, you know Roland Garros has been always kind of an important milestone in everyone's career you know when you win other slams you don't certainly become star of the of the main tour then but whoever wins Roland Garros for some reason manages to do well uh, later on um, in the senior competitions as well so this is where you know all the sponsors all the agents are watching big times uh, these new stars coming up so big day for French tennis definitely so Arthur Fies the 14th seed winner of the Orange Bowl last year will face Luca Van Asche who saw their 7-5-6-4 so it's the 14th seed against the 13th and all French 
French affair in the final of the junior boys singles competition. So plenty for the home fans to be cheering on there. No home players this year in the girls singles final. It was dominated by the Russians, but it was the unseeded Linda Noskova who was able to come through against the fourth seed. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, we talk about different countries, how you have momentums that, OK, all uh, the French guys are doing so great. Not not any French girls that we see the same with the Italians doing so well before was Vinci Panetta for the girls. So it always swings uh, from one country to another. and. Uh, yeah, um, you know, different stories in the women's, women's juniors tournament. Look at that absolute delight. And she will face Erika Andreeva, the Russian, the unseeded Russian, who defeated the ninth seed in this competition. This was a battle. She had to come from a step down to book her place. And there was the roar, and there was the smiling, and there is the delight through to the junior Roland Garros final. It's, uh, it just shows, you know, how difficult the conditions are because, look, even the junior players, they have all the energy in the world and they also look exhausted. So I can't even imagine what it must have been for Stefanos and uh, Sasha out there. Yeah, absolutely. So congratulations to the finalists in the junior competition. Now, it's been quite a while, I think you'll have to admit, since the players were introduced out onto Philippe Chatry. And I believe, Eli, if I've heard this right, you are still in the first game. Absolutely. Game duration, seven minutes. Novak Djokovic has already had two break points defended by two solid first serves, one ace and one sort of ace, not a full ace, by Rafa. Now he just had a game point for the first time and he served a double fault. So there's a lot of tension in this, even for a guy who has won 105 matches on, uh, in this venue and has only lost twice. One of the guys who beat him, obviously, on the other side of the net. So... Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. The atmosphere is very, very peculiar. The court is perfect. It was watered down just before. Uh, everybody is almost in the shade. Now, only the, the, the people sitting in the stands in front of me are in the sun. They're in the dead sun, and they're very hot. But the court is fully in the shade, 100%. So temperature is not going to be an issue um, throughout this match. It's deuce. It's still the first game. And we've been on for eight minutes, which is a long time for one game. I gotta say, Gigi, I mean, I'm always so jealous of Eli, you know, being so close to the action, not being able to be on the court as a player anymore. But this is the most jealous I've ever been because, I mean, it just doesn't get better than being so close to Rafa and, uh, uh, and Novak. And I have a feeling we might be in for maybe the longest they've ever played. What do you guys well. think? I think that if the match lasts as long as this game is going to last, then, uh, I mean, let's get some popcorn, let's let's set up. But here's a great lob uh, that Rafa is going to get. Oh, it's, everything is coming back. The defense is absolutely amazing, and we're still in play. This point is crazy. Oh, and it's a force, unforced error by Novak on the retreat of the lob. The crowd, I think it's a 75-25 in favor of no, of uh, Rafa. There are There are... Uh, Spanish flags all over the place. There are some Serbian flags, so it's not 100% Rafa. He's right here, literally right here next to me now. He was wiping off his hands. And again, he's in a situation to take this first game that is ever long, everlasting. It were in the 10th minute of this first game. If every game is 10 minutes, this could be a super, super long affair. Eli, next time we're hitting, I'm expecting you to hit that kind of lob the same way, okay? Oh, well, um, I, I, the loves will come from you. I'll just retreat. Meanwhile, this is a game point for Rafa, and it's out. And finally, it's over. 1-0. <laughs> Only the first game, but it's over. Rafa Nadal is up 1-0 after 10 minutes of play. Eli, we're going to send you a chair so you can have a little bit of a rest, and we will be back with you before the end of the show. But we also want to get you set for tomorrow's showpiece event that will see one player crowned a Grand Slam champion for the very first time. day you want to win so you stay there every point and you're doing um, what you have to do like it's been a long road it's been a lot of ups and downs I'm in the final trying to enjoy and then yeah try to do better you know I always wanted to play matches like this big 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 tournaments big opponents you know last rounds it was always something that I wanted to achieve, but, you know, it was just taking so long. You know, I just think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm just really going to enjoy it because 
I was never expecting to actually be this far. As tennis players, um, that's the only goal I think we have in the head. That's, that's why we play in tennis. That's like, for us, that's the biggest achievement you can get. Anastasia Pavlichenkova against Barbara Krejcikova. And just listening to them there, you felt the pressure was coming from the Russians saying, this is what we've been playing for. This is her 52nd main draw to Grand Slam. Krejcikova on the other hand, hits her fifth Grand Slam main draw in singles. She's going to enjoy herself. Yeah, exactly. But I have a feeling for both girls, they will be in, uh, able to enjoy it much more than the semifinals. I felt like that's where they were overwhelmed by the emotions. Uh, and you could see like they were obviously not playing their best tennis. But I feel like now going into the finals, they are part of it. No matter, you know, of course they want to win, but already it's unbelievable achievement what they've done. So I think this is where we can expect from the tennis point of view a much better match than uh, what we've seen in the semifinals. I mean, it was so emotional and all four girls really leaving it all out there, especially uh, the one last night, uh, but also uh, Pavluchenkova against Zidancek. It was, it was a tight beginning. Uh, what uh, I was really impressed with Pavluchenkova was her tactical plan. Um, it was so obvious. She was attacking that Zidancek backhand big time. She didn't let her uh, dominate with the forehand side, and she stayed with it. She was very disciplined, something I've missed in Anastasia's game for quite a few years, that I knew she had her shot, but it was a matter of time when she would walk away from her tactical plan. But yesterday, she was able to stick with it. And I think because both girls, uh, both finalists, managed to get through the matches when they were tight, they were nervous, they didn't play their best tennis. I think now is the time where tomorrow they can just really go out there, enjoy themselves and relax. And also very controlled emotions from the Russian through the match at the end of the match and her encore interview in her press conference staying very, very calm. Yeah, very mature. And this is where it shows, you know, that she's been winning big titles, not Grand Slams, but she she is used to the uh, situations uh, where on the other hand with Krejcikova, um, you know, everything's new to her. And that's why I've been so impressed. I mean, the way she handled that match yesterday, I, I feel like I've played it. I mean, I was so emotional. I was sweating. I was tired. I was, I was everything. Uh, and uh, yeah, at the end, um, after that uh, line, linesman call, you kind of felt for her and almost you wished she would have won because would she have lost that match? I don't know how she would ever uh, forget it um, because she kind of won the match and then she had to win it again. So it was incredible effort from both uh, Maria as well. She really left it out there and I feel like her time is going to come because she puts all the hours, all the effort in. Um, but Krejcikova at the end just held her nerves a little bit better. She won the Strasbourg title coming in, so she's on this unbeaten run. She's full of confidence, and as we saw earlier, will also be contesting the doubles. The double she's so comfortable in, she's so confident in, and it's really complementing. As we've talked through these championships, it's complementing her singles. Yeah, it has, and it was really cool to see her out there because, you know, when she played such a long time yesterday, it would be understandable if she says, look, I need to save myself the energy for tomorrow's final. So it was great respect to her partner that she went out there. And also she understands that she wouldn't be in that singles final if it was not for her doubles and how much good that has done to her game over the years. So it was really cool, I thought, for Krejcikova to come out there after the incredible match yesterday, having the finals in front of her tomorrow and still give her best in doubles as well. So all the credit to her. Now, with the women's singles final in mind, here for you is our question of the day. So we've seen both in action. We've laid down how they've got there. Now the question is, is it Anastasia Pavlichenkova or is it Barbara Krejcikova? You know what, this one, I think I'm just going to let the fans decide. I, I can't tell. I mean, it's 50-50. It's so close uh, for me. Like I said, uh, Anastasia just being more experienced. She's very matured, very disciplined with her shots. That's the edge for her. Krejcikova has got beautiful hands, beautiful ability, comes to the net. And somehow, even though she's super tight, super nervous in the matches, she finds a way how to get over that. So to me, it's a 50-50. Let's see what the fans got to say. Ooh. Well, we got a poll to come. But earlier today, we did go out and about around Roland Garros to find out how you feel about who's going to win tomorrow's final. Pavlyuchenkova or Krejcikova in the final? Who's going to win? I have no idea. Krejcikova. I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> Probably Krejcikova. Pavlyuchenkova. Krejcikova. Pavlyuchenkova. Krejcikova. Uh, Pavlyuchenkova. Who? Chenkova. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem.
I would just say Ova. <laughs> One way or the other, it's going to be Ova. I, <laughs> I can't win. go wrong with like that. But they didn't really help, help me, the fans, right? No, they didn't they help at all. They were the same like me, just very undecisive. It's, it's a hard one to call. The other thing is we, we don't have any history because it's a first meeting because Krejcikova has been plying her trade largely on the doubles. And now they're suddenly meeting in a, in a Grand Slam final. So we can't even look back on 57 meetings like Nadal and Djokovic and say, well, from, from this, I can think this. I'm going for Ova. You're going Ova's for gonna Ova. win. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, let's see how you've been voting <laughs> in our poll for question. Which over have you gone for? <laughs> right, here we go. They've gone for the wow. over from Russia. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, uh, yeah, good, good fans knowledge because obviously she's got the experience. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to go with the flow and go with what the fans suggest. You're going with Pavlichenkova. Yeah. Sticking with your over. Now, continuing our theme of preparing you and building up to tomorrow's final, this has also been the focus of today's Eye of Daniela. I cannot imagine how they must be feeling ahead of what will be the biggest day and the biggest match of their lives. And that's why I can't even make the prediction because, you know, both girls have never been in this situation. It can get so overwhelming. From my own experience, I can only tell, talk about semifinals. Uh, it was in Australian Open and I never expected I would feel like that. You know, I've, I've won big tournaments before, but Grand Slam semifinals, finals, it's, it's different. As Anastasia said in her interview, this is what you work hard for. This is why you are born as a tennis player. And uh, that's why the emotions are the most important part uh, of, uh, of the t final tomorrow. And that's why both girls have their psychologists working with them, traveling with them, because it is at the end of the day, at this stage, small details, everything happens between the ears. And emotionally, being in the final, I, I don't even know how they, they feel. Like I said, the semifinals was already too much for me to handle. I, I didn't manage to, to get all the way, but um, you know these are the special moments that you work hard for. And that's why, because it's so emotional, uh, I can't make the prediction because it really depends uh, who's going to be able to manage those nerves better. Well, earlier today, we got the opportunity to speak to both of tomorrow's finalists. She found the key um, to me. Um, and I think because she was watching me practicing in Moscow and stuff like that, and because uh, she tries to uh, really like open up myself, reveal myself. So I'm like being myself actually, because I um, a lot of times, you know, sometimes like they tell you what to say um, or whatever, how to act on the court. Where now I'm like I feel I'm more free out of the court and on the court. So that's also the main things. You know, I feel that if I'm going to go and just, you know, if I'm going to go there and I just want to really, really win, I think I'm not going to win. So I'm just, you know, I'm just going to go there and I think, you know, as, as I said, I already achieved so much that, you know, right now it's just, it just, it's just fun. For me, it's fun. I just try to see it as a fun, just, you know, just do my best, go for every single ball, fight for every single one. and. Just the most, for me, the most important is to enjoy because I think that's where I can play my best tennis. So I really have to enjoy the match. It's interesting hearing Pavlichenkova talk about working with her sports psychologist, but there is something about Krejcikova that is so calm. Whether it's just a very good act, and inside she said before one of her matches that she felt so sick, she locked herself in the toilet and didn't want to come out. But everything, she's, she's saying the right things. She's saying the right things, but it's a fine balance because, you know, when someone tells you to just go out there, have fun, enjoy, I mean, you've worked all your life for that match. So, yes, in your mind, that's what you will try to do, but then you don't know what to expect because you've never been in that situation. But it's the right approach. Yeah, I totally agree with her. But it's easier said than done um, because, like I said, it's the biggest day of both their uh, tennis careers. And uh, I feel like the semifinals was mentally tougher. Now they can really go out there and enjoy themselves just because of the tournament they've already had. But... At the same time, you know, they want to go that one step uh, closer to the trophy. So it's going to be about who finds a better balance tomorrow. And adding to our conversation about feeling the pressure ahead of a Grand Slam final has been former world number one Lindsay Davenport. It can be overwhelming. And it's so important to kind of get settled in your, circum in your surroundings, those first few games, try and establish how you want to play. Um, but the most important thing is whatever you do as a player to control your nerves and for some players it's breathing other players they focus on one particular thing um, to really try and lock into that early on um, no question an edge goes to Pavlichenkova just 
in virtue of how these semifinals went and the amount of drama that uh, Krejcikova had to go through. So if I'm Pavlyuchenkova, I'm looking to start quickly. I'm looking to really make a move early on, really test Barbara to see what she has left in the tank. It is an intriguing matchup in tomorrow's final. Now, I think we've moved on a little bit from where we were the last time we checked in with you, Eli, and Philippe Chatrier. We did, we did, uh, especially Rafa. Rafa did more than Novak since he's up three love. Um, at After he won that first game, Novak Djokovic was then up 40-15, had two opportunities to tie at one all, wasn't able to close off that game to serve it out, and then Rafa got himself a break point, an amazing point with an exchange at the volley. Uh, he defended first a couple of matches, then an, extended, uh, an exchange at the volley, and he managed to put away the ball to go up to love followed it up by a, 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 a service game at love sorry so and that's a 3-0 advantage now in favor of uh the man who owns 13 titles here on court so novak djokovic trailing love three after 21 minutes thank you very much eli those men have got 171 career titles between them it's astonishing now let's take a look at tomorrow's order of play it is not just the one final that we have for you on philippe chatrier tomorrow we will be starting with the match we've been previewing we've been talking about we're sort of sitting on the fence when it comes to it because it's so tough to call and then what looks like danny could be a really fun men's doubles final oh i'm so looking forward to that one like uh, you know uh gg how much i love the the french uh, team and uh, it's gonna be fun because they all four guys, they bring so much energy, so much entertainment. So not only a great women's final coming up, but the doubles afterwards as well. Now, one more thing that we have to discuss. It wasn't just tennis, tennis that was being played today. You, earlier today, you played a different sort of tennis. I was hoping we were going to pass that. Well, we we're already running time. We <laughs> out of time. time. But um, yeah, what a fun sport, uh, Paddle. This uh, is, I think, my second or third time that I've ever played. Not easy. Uh, because you have to learn how to use the <laughs> the walls and stuff. And actually, at the beginning, I tried to um, like overheat uh, instead of slicing. Um, so it's uh, no, it's so so intense. Uh, great workout, great cardio, uh, so much fun. So whoever hasn't tried, I do recommend uh, big time because um, we already uh, talked with Arnold w w when we're gonna play next. Because I'm 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 hooked. I'm like um, you know, as soon as the tournament is over, I'm getting into that. So. Yeah, tennis has been great to me, but uh, paddle it is now. Okay, so maybe next for you and Eli, it's paddle tennis. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah? Eli, okay. ready? Okay. I am. All right, yeah. we'll sort that out. So we'll, we'll keep you posted with what happens there. Now, tomorrow is slightly different because we've got the women's singles final at 3 o'clock. So we will be with you from 1 p.m. local time. That is previewing the final. And then live at Roland Garros, we'll be back in the evening around 45 minutes to an hour after the final ball and after the winner has been crowned. So keep an eye on the social media channels. We'll update you with when and where we are going to be with you. But enjoy the rest of your day for Nadal Djokovic at website, ball by ball comments on Radio Roland Garros. But until next time, Eli's staying where he is. He's getting ready for his paddle tennis tournament after the match he's watching now. And we'll be back with you tomorrow. Bye for now.